As much as the sky was falling after the loss to Granada, we all know that beating Atletico Madrid is the difference between winning La Liga and not winning La Liga. Real Madrid, meanwhile, haven't impressed since El Clasico, and they're looking very mortal after getting knocked out of the Champions League semifinal. And we've talked a ton about big games that Barcelona have not been good enough for this season. But a win against Atleti at this point in the year will certainly change that narrative. Hi, I'm Dan Hilton, and this is the Barcelona Podcast YouTube Exclusive. And since I don't usually do this, if you want more exclusive content here on the YouTube channel, make sure you leave your key to the match down in the comments below, and make sure you give this channel a subscribe while you're down there. And now back to the preview. The Liga is coming down to the wire. While Barca, Real Madrid, and Atletico Madrid have each won the Liga in the last 10 years, the titles have only been close in the final weeks a few times. The last time those three were all battling it out this late in a season, we need to go back 29 years. Yes, I know Sevilla are still in it, but their lost athletic club last week made it quite difficult. Though you never know. That said, let's head back to 1992 with some enjoyable precedent for kool -Aids. On this very match day, so four matches remaining, and keep in mind that wins were only two points back then, Barca were two points behind Real Madrid and one point adrift of Atleti. Atleti dropped their points prior to the final match day, and Real Madrid lost to Tenerife, while Barca beat Athletic Club at the Camp Nou, and the team that had just beaten Sampdoria in the European Cup were celebrating again. The time before that when things were this close and Barca took home the title, 1953, when Barca overcame a two-point deficit to Valencia with four matches left, finishing with 42 points, Valencia with 40, and Real Madrid with 39. Do I shoehorn Barca's manager that season, Heleno Herrera, into way more videos than humanly possible? Probably. Those are the ones that Barca won. Unfortunately, 1971 saw Valencia, Barca, and Atleti within two points of one another on the final match day, and a draw between Barca and Atletico Madrid gave Valencia the title. In 1973, in the fourth to last match of the season, Barca drew Atleti 0-0 while being two points behind them, and Atletico Madrid hung on to win the title. In 2014, when things were mathematically still possible for Tata Martino and company, three points behind, a draw for the Red and Whites at the Camp Nou wrapped up their first La Liga title of the 21st century. But back to the matter at hand in the present day. At this point, we have a pretty good idea what Rano Koeman will have in mind. Barca hasn't played Atleti since the change to the 3-5-2, and even then they were struggling back in the fall. But even in those struggles, the only difference in the match was a misplay by Ter Stegen and one good chance for Yana Carrasco and a 1-0 win for Atleti at home. Barca had more possession, more shots, more passes, more everything, but goals. The team from Madrid isn't firing on all cylinders now, like they were then, and Barca are obviously a much different team. Let's start there. But let's quickly consider why the three points are still easier said than done. The conversation likely begins with Marcos Llorente and Jan Oblak. Oblak needs no introduction. Another season, another year, when Jan Oblak is anchoring the best defense in the Liga. The Slovenian goalkeeper can obviously be the difference maker in this game. In the case of Llorente, he has an argument for the best player in Spain this season if your name isn't Messi or Benzema. He scored 12 and assisted 10, sure, but his movement for Atleti is what really makes a difference off the stat sheet. He isn't the focal point like Messi, Urago Aspas, Celta de Vigo, and that's what makes him so deadly. He likes to shade out wide, work with a fullback to take the attention to the wings, then he'll attack the space left in behind and make a late run into the penalty area, where if he doesn't score himself, he can create chances for others. Another nuance to account for is the advanced role that Atletico Madrid captain Coque is playing. For playing on a team that loves to defend as much as Diego Simeone's team does, Coque has completed the fifth most passes of any player in the Liga, behind only De Jong, Busquets, Villarreal's Dani Parejo, and Jordi Alba. While he's played pretty much everywhere for Simeone, Jeffrey Condovia has been playing as a destroyer and allowing Koke to get a bit farther forward and creating numerical overloads on the right side with Llorente and Kirin Trippier. Like Busquets, for Atleti, Koke can't be given time on the ball. Atleti is full of other incredible players, Carrasco and Hel Correa, Thomas Lamar is finally in form, Saul, and Jao Felix is struggling and currently dealing with a tough ankle injury but still so talented plus Jose Maria Jimenez and Mario Hermoso all on the back line, maybe even Moussa Dembele off the bench. Simeone hasn't been consistent with his lineups, which is sometimes a good thing for him and sometimes not so great. But above all, the one guy I do expect to start is Luis Suarez. The Uruguayan, Barca's third all-time goal scorer in club history, will be starting this match. The matter of who starts next to him and underneath him is the only real question. He has cooled off as Atleti has cooled off since 2021 began, 
but he still has 19 goals, and I don't need to remind you how he puts the ball in the back of the net. On paper, Atleti looked just as strong as Barca at key spots across the 11. But as Simeone once famously said, Atleti don't have Messi. Messi has 32 goals in 42 matches against the Rojiblancos, Blancos, his second most goals against any one specific opponent. He's also scored three hat-tricks against them. He also doesn't lose to them. Until the loss at the Wanda Metropolitano in November, Messi hadn't lost to Atleti since February of 2010. The last Messi lost to Atletico at the Camp Nou, February of 2006. I know that's just ancient history, but it's a reminder that Messi can be the difference maker, in case you forgot. With Luis Suarez leading, they are a tough side. They've scored more goals, that being 61, and allowed less goals, 22, than Real Madrid in both those counts, while Barcelona does have the best goal differential in the Liga, even though they've conceded more. The Colchoneros will be progressive with the ball. They're going to try to retain possession, but for Barcelona, I think there's going to be a bit of a press, and I wouldn't be surprised if you see some man marking behind Condobia. So let the back line, let Condobia beat you with long balls, whatever it may be. If they can do it, then that's what Barcelona need to live with. But Coque, Llorente, Suarez obviously up in the box, Lamar if he's on, Xiao Felix, those are the players that Barcelona have got to crowd off the ball and not allow those players to be the difference makers. So this means that Griezmann, Pedri, Frankie de Jong, and Busquets behind them are going to have to press high up the field at times to disrupt some of that buildup. They're going to have to be passive at others, man mark in behind, and allow maybe, not a line breaking pass, but allow Condobia a little bit of room to run and figure things out himself. Because for Barcelona, it's going to be keep this pressure up, how much pressure, when they bring the pressure, and you're not going to have Ronald Koeman on the sideline to direct traffic, it's going to be Schroeder, who you could give some credit to for being the architect of this 3-5-2. But I go back to Suarez, and considering Antoine Griezmann, yes, he'll have to do his work defensively, but a reminder that Suarez, who had 11 goals and assists in 9 games to start the year, he's only managed 3 since mid-February. Antoine Griezmann against his former side, well, yes, he hasn't scored in a Barcelona jersey against Atletico Madrid, but at the moment, Antoine Griezmann, 8 goals and an assist in his last 9 matches in all competitions. He's really firing well, and the partnership between he and Messi is the best it's ever been since Antoine Griezmann made the jump from Madrid to Barcelona. But the biggest thing is going to be focus and not taking los contenedos, which means the mattress makers, for granted. A reminder too that in the last decade, while Barcelona have been trying to get back to the Champions League final since 2015, well, Atletico Madrid in almost that same time period have made two finals, unfortunately losing to Real Madrid on both occasions. They've also won the Europa League three times in the last decade, and they have won 10 leagues in their history. The most recent coming in 1996, and of course, as I mentioned, in 2014. And this is a team, as much as we say that the Spanish government and the Liga are all supporting Real Madrid, well, King Felipe VI of Spain, he's an Atletico Madrid fan, he's been the honorary president of the club since 2003. And Barcelona can't take for granted the absolutely terrible form that Atletico Madrid are in at the moment. A run of 15 wins and 16 games in the first half of the season put them at the top of the table where it looked like Barca and Real Madrid were unable to catch up at all. Because at the end of January, they'd only lost once. But since then, and that being February onwards, just one time have they even won back-to-back -back games, consistently dropping points whenever they had the chance. In that same time period, they got knocked out of the Copa del Rey by Cornea, the third division inside that Barca B had beat this season, plus Barcelona's first team beat them as well. And things didn't go so well against Chelsea in the knockout round of the Champions League. It was one thing to lose 3-0 on aggregate, but Atletico Madrid were completely played off the field. And yes, they do have Luis Suarez. Yes, they do have Diego Simeone. But this is a team not really in form, and I think that actually makes them the most dangerous. Yes, Real Madrid still need to drop points. They have Sevilla, Granada, Athletic Club, and Villarreal. And that sounds to me like a much more difficult road than what Atleti have, which is Barcelona, Real Sociedad, Osasuna, and Real Valladolid. Or Barcelona, who have Atleti, Levante, Celta de Vigo, and Abar to close out the season. Barca may not control their own destiny, but I get the sense that they might with three points against Atletico Madrid. Even then, it's not over, but it'll be awful close. And you know this isn't the last time we'll be talking Barca Atleti. I already previewed this match on the locker room on FC Barcelona's official Twitch channel, and make sure you come back here for the YouTube match review as well as the podcast next week. And most importantly, Barca Barca.